Running a 240-acre vegetable farm comes with many challenges. Our cost of production is getting higher and higher and higher. And there's a lot of time that our pricing doesn't match up on what our cost of production is. Labor cost is becoming a major factor into our business. I have no doubt that in time we are going to have to go robotic. It's hitting our industry 100 miles an hour. And if we don't move with the times, you start to fall behind. An autonomous robot easily outlasts any farm worker. Ripper can cover five acres a day just on solar charge. That's looking at every single plant on around four football fields at a swift six kilometres an hour. Ripper is a very different robot to the other ones. We're very much focusing on the large scale operations. The big growers that predominantly feed most of Australia. Ripper is quite advanced in terms of the type of technology that's on board. Because we are dealing with the larger scale farms, we can afford to put more expensive sensors, more expensive equipment on board, and have a much more sophisticated robot. The solar powered Ripper is now facing its final round of trials. If things go to plan, the platform should soon be ready for its full operational release. Yep. This robot is all about precision technology and packed with highly accurate sensors that are connected to neural networks. It can understand its surroundings and then activate a range of tools or payloads. All this on its own and in real time. Ripper is a fast learner, and today it will be put to an acid test. Only a few hours ago, it learned about a new crop, broccoli. Now it has to find and remove pests from it. And the team is getting ready for an early trial. All right. Where would I sit if I was a beetle? <laughs> Somewhere where it's nice and munchy, right? Field days are the most important part of the whole R&D cycle. All right, Matt, we're ready. Ready. OK, you better work. We have these really fancy ideas to start off with, and we're all confident, and then you go out into the environment, and the environment teaches you a whole lot more. OK, stop. Matt, you're doing ground-based. What? We're on pests. Oh, I thought you were on the other one. Sorry, go back. Come on. It will always have work. a problem in any field trial. We'll have robots not working, navigation systems not working, we'll have robots fall down in holes, we'll have uh, soil types, they could be really muddy, but what we've learnt comes back into the next field trial. All set to run the trial for grower Adam Ballin. Morning. How's it going? How are we? Good Adam. Good. We just did a trial where we pretended there was some... Adam is a third generation there. farmer. And, and like many of his colleagues, he can't wait to see what the robots have in store. Output. It's all systems go. Ready, CPU. Foreign objects can be anything that finds its way into vegetable fields. One. You got it. One. From pests like snails or beetles to rubbish like plastic or glass. Two. If they end up in produce boxes, supermarkets can reject the entire truckload. One. It might be better on the other side behind it. Got it. You ripper. <laughs> Adam's days of walking hundreds of rows with a backpack vacuum could soon be over. We use, basically, we just go through every single plant yeah. and suck it up. So, I mean, this is actually identifying where it's got to go. Exactly right, yeah. So, I mean, because we talked about that's that. That's a lot smarter than what we actually need. That's so. good. Miss four, got ten. Good, good work, work, guys. We tried out these new machine learning algorithms, which allowed us to speed up the whole learning process. So we want to be able to go through and have Ripper traverse over a number of different rows, identify the plant, and now Ripper knows that plant. It can now target and spray that individual plant. Spraying brilliantly now. Yeah. And what that would do is dramatically reduce the amount of chemicals, and that would be a game changer, because if you could do something like that, then within a space of a few hours, you can go to any farm anywhere around Australia, and all of a sudden Ripper will now know, OK, this is the crop that I'm most interested in. It's still firing more on this side. No, you're right. It's still firing more on this side. Out in the paddocks, Swagbot has to learn what a weed is. Here, Ripper learns what the crop is, and everything else is weed. It's firing away. It's doing really Now it can decide on the spot what to fertilise or eradicate. Or it can activate its vacuum or the mechanical weeder. All that while moving along. 
Not bad since it's only learnt about broccoli yesterday. It's pretty impressive what those algorithms can do. Click some data, train them up, and that's it. It knows broccoli now. Yeah. So the bot that we've seen so far will definitely be beneficial to us, but mechanising the harvesting will be what I would like to think is our number one priority because that's where we're so labour intense. The race to invent tomorrow's outdoor harvesting robot is already on. Salah's team is running first lab experiments, but there's still a long way to go. Not only does a system need to be able to identify what the crop is and if it's the right size to be picked, it also needs to master delicate moves without damaging the crop. Now probably a little bit lower, but you can feel it now. If you, no. It's safe to put the hand in? It's quite safe. Okay, just get, okay. Oh, okay, all right, well, that's, that's very strong actually, isn't it? It's a lot of pressure in there. Can we do that again? In the future, a harvesting arm like this could be added to strong. Ripper. But for now, the pressure is on to complete a robust platform that can manage crops across the growing cycle.